Hi and welcome to tutorial 88 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. Tutorial 88 follows on from tutorial 86 and 87 and uh, if you haven't watched those I suggest you would do that because we're going to be setting up a price series provider in exactly the same way as we did in tutorial 87. But what this tutorial is going to do is look at a program that I've written to calculate the ADX using a price series provider. So what I've got here, if you uh, if you can see the screen, is a five minute pound dollar, and underneath that I've got a an ADX calculated using the five the five minute chart, but using a thirty minute price series provider. What I've also got on here is a data two of the half hourly data and I'm just plotting the ADX from that as well just so that we can check the values are the same and uh, if we were to look at the values here you'll see that this particular bar the uh, the ADX PSP on the left which is the one I'm calculating using the 30 minute PSP is the same as the ADX which I'm calculating using the half hourly data. What I'm also doing is historically I'm plotting the ADX as red. Moving forward in real time, I'm plotting it as a different color, so we can just see how the uh, all the the bars that have been calculated while the thing has been applied to the chart. What I haven't done in this tutorial, if we go right back to the beginning of the chart, is the actual ADX has got some functional uh, functionality to make the value converge quickly to what it should be, and uh, you'll see here that right at the beginning of the chart, my uh, ADX takes a little bit of time to converge to the value that it would be after a certain number of bars. But uh, just to try and keep things a little bit more understandable, I've omitted some of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the ADX itself and see how this thing calculates the ADX. So what I've done is in my Trade Station development environment, I've opened up the ADX indicator and you'll see that the ADX value is being calculate using a function called ADX. So what I'm going to do is uh, right click on that and I'm going to open this function. And if we uh, if we look at the function, we'll see that the ADX itself is being returned from another function called DIR, DIR movement. Again, if we right click on that, we can open that and we can begin to see the calculation taking place. Now, as I mentioned previously, some of this stuff is to do with trying to get the values to converge more quickly to the value that they would be if there was more data in effect. Um, I haven't included that just to try and keep things a little bit more simple. And uh, the way this calculates is for the, if the current bar is one, it, it does this. I haven't included that. But what I have included is this functionality here. And this is the, uh, the guts of the calculation. Now, you'll notice that uh, we're using upper move and lower move. And in this particular case, it's referring to price H minus price H one bar ago. Now, because the program that we're going to be looking at is applied to a five minute chart, we don't really want the value one bar ago. We want the value of what it would have been one half hourly bar ago. So we need to find some way of uh, of avoiding using this one bar ago thing, which we do. And uh, similarly with the true range custom, we, we can't use that. Any Anywhere essentially where we're looking one bar back, we can't use that. And uh, the other thing that I haven't used is this uh, cumulative thing here. Again, this is to do, as it says here, approximate length build up calculation. We're not going to do that. We're just going to use the uh, the ADX, which is calculated here by taking the ADX one bar ago. Again, we can't use one bar ago because on a f apply to a five minute chart, that's going to mean the, the last five minute bar. We don't want that. We want the last 30 minute bar. So we can't use that. So let's just have a look at the program that we have created here. And incidentally, if you're a Gold Pass member, I'm going to make this program available for you just to cut and paste and uh, experiment with yourself. But let's look at the program here and I'm going to try and explain what I've done. Now, if we go to the top of the program, we'll see that uh, the obviously declared various inputs, variables, or rather one input and various variables. The uh, 
the at the top of the program you're going to see something which is somewhat similar to what we did in tutorial 87 and again if you haven't watched that then i suggest suggest you do and that is declaring the price series provider and uh, creating this update method and i explained how to do that in tutorial 87 so you might want to look at that so then for historic data what we're doing is we're looking at we're trying to find out when a half hourly bar has ended and we're doing that by using this PSP time which we're getting from the PSP price series provider and we're keeping a record of when we last accessed it which we're storing in time last when they're different and when this is a historic and historic bar which we find using get app info then we're doing a calculation similar to what it is in the ADX calculation. Now you'll notice here that I'm getting the high of the PSP using this thing high and uh, this is the current bar and we do need to put the zero in square brackets and this is the previous. Now because this is the PSP this is referring to the last half hour bar so we can we can make that calculation fairly straightforward and um, the calculation if you look at the two programs side by side you'll see this is fairly similar but where we get into problems is we need to use the average plus DM. And in the uh, in the actual ADX program, this does so by referring to average plus DM with square brackets one. Let's just uh, double check that that is the case. Now, in, in this particular program, it doesn't refer to them as, um, no, yes, it does. Average plus DM equals average plus DM square brackets. We can't use the square brackets because that would be what it was the last five minute bar. We want it the last half, half hour bar, 30 minute bar in this particular case. So what I've done is created another variable called prev av plus dm. And if we go down towards the bottom of the program, you'll see that what I do after we've done the calculation, I store prev avg plus dm is equal to average plus dm. And I do that similarly for average minus dm. I do it also for underscore v o l t y to uh, to store that value in p r e v v o l t y, and then we do the calculation there. Now this area here is the uh, the custom function that we saw in the ADX calculation true range custom. We can't do that, um, so what we do is we've created our own little calculation here. What it does it's taking the highest of the high this 30 minute bar and the close of the last 30 minute bar minus the lowest of the low for this bar and the close of the previous bar and uh, that comes out with the same thing these other calculations are it's pretty similar. Now, I've you probably noticed the naming convention here. Instead of O D M I plus, I just used an underscore D M I plus, and uh, and so on, until we actually get down to the calculation of the the A D X itself, and then we just store the values here, which are then going to be used next time because this won't run again. Well, we also store time last because this uh, section of the program won't run again until again the uh, the time of the bar, the time of the PSP bar is different from time last. Okay, so that works fine for historic bars, but we needed to find some way of dealing similar, similarly to program 87 of real time bars. And uh, we do that by using a update method. And that is found higher up the program here. And uh, the syntax we discussed in the previous tutorial, you can see that here. You don't need to concern yourself too much with this because this is, is pretty standard. Just don't change it. And uh, what we're saying is if args reason is two. Now, this is the, uh, the thing that is returned by the um, update. And it's saying this is the end of the bar. So we know that this is the end of the bar. And... The first time this runs, we just need to uh, set our variables correctly. And we do that by, by using this thing RT. And uh, we're saying if this is false, then we do this. We're just going to do this once when we first go into real time. And then we set RT 
to be equal to true. And you'll notice that RT is an intrabar persist variable because this update uh, method is going to be running every tick on the data. Okay, so we set those things and uh, we create a new set of variables which I've ended with RT, meaning real time. And the only difference between them and their equivalents of the non-real time is I've made these intrabar persist. Okay, so you'll see that the calculation is very similar to the one that we've just done, apart from we, we're now using these RT variables and the, uh, the calculation of the, the ADX using the, uh, the RT version of itself. And then right down at the bottom of the program, I've included the plot. And we're actually plotting the RT version because you probably noticed in the... Uh, even in the historic, we wanted to store that in the ADXRT, the ADX that we'd calculated. But what we're saying is that if it is a real time, in other words, get app, get app info AI re, real time calc is equal to one, then we set the uh, plot color to green. Okay, so I'm just going to scan, just go up here so you can see we've got these using statements up here for the parts of the trade station development environment that we we need the namespaces and then we've got the variables here some of which have been renamed from the ADX program some of which are intrabar persist most of them are not followed by this update method which is similar to the one that we had in program 87 and I'm just going to scoot across here so you can see the full syntax there if you want to copy this yourselves and uh, experiment with it. Then we've got the creation of the new price series provider. Again, the same was created in the same way as tutorial 87. And then we've got the ADX calculated for historic bars. finally we've got the plot there so as I say this I'm going to make this available as a you can cut and paste this if you are a gold pass member and just bear in mind that I haven't uh, calculated the or I have not made special efforts to make sure that the ADX converges quickly to the value it needs to get to because this is an ADX is an accumulative calculation and then you'll see here that the color is beginning to change because since I've had this applied to the chart we've uh, we've calculated one bar and we're just starting to calculate another one anyway I hope you might find this useful